Luke and Leighton meet Babette, a wealthy woman hysterical over the disappearance of her boy Tom. The two offer to help look for Tom, though the only clue they have is one of Tom's tiny shoes. Professor Layton and Luke search for additional clues on the train. Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we explored the train a little bit, and then we found out that this lady's son went missing, and she's going all crazy about it, so we gotta go ahead and look for him, because that's what Leighton's do best. Help out annoying people that don't really deserve help in the first place. Uh, we came. I wanted to see if I could talk to those people. What's this? Something's fallen behind those boxes. It appears to be a cap of some sort. But I don't think I could reach it from here. Maybe the cap belongs to Tom. We certainly shouldn't rule out the possibility. Oh hey, since we're on the subject of caps, have you ever heard this one, Professor? Certain things over the puzzle, I see. Puzzle number 14, red caps. Do we get a Mario reference? Eh, probably not. A preschool teacher had everyone in her class close their eyes. While none of them, while none of the students were looking, she slipped caps onto their heads and then said, Okay, everyone, open your eyes and look at the hats all of your friends are wearing. Whoever sees four or more people wearing red hats gets a red balloon, and whoever doesn't gets a blue balloon. In a class of ten children, only some of the kids got a red balloon. Knowing this, how many kids went home with a red balloon? Wow, I feel really bad for this kindergartner right here with the big old schnoz. And this one right here with the big old schnoz. Even in uh, childhood, they all look, all the latent characters look really sick and creepy. Hint number one. The puzzle says that some of the children received red balloons. From that, you can infer that there were no fewer than four children in red hats. Hint number two. The puzzle says some of the kids received a red balloon. By definition, therefore, not all of the kids received a red balloon. Yeah, I kind of got that already. Hint number three, if every preschooler had on a red hat, you'd see every single child go home with a red balloon. Remembering that the children aren't allowed to add their own hat to their total, think about how many children would receive a red balloon if nine kids wore red hats. What about if eight did? Seven? Just keep going down the line. The solution is that six children went home with red balloons, and again, I'm surprised that registered. And now to test my theory. I love the timing on that, like he times his uh we he times it. his delivery of the line with like the flashing uh, image of himself is like, and now to test my theory. Rats, I was sure I could stump you with that one. Better look next time, Luke. For now we'd better return to searching for that lost little boy. Alright, oh, yep, better get back to that. Now that you mention it, how do you suppose Tom managed to warm his way into such a little space? Hmm, good question. And we got Tom's hat. You can find items you picked up in the Professor's trunk. Not only that, we could also find uh, the camera here on the trunk. Just gonna click on it so we can get the thingy out of the way. Basically, you'll just get a bunch of pieces and you just have to adjust them all and place them into the camera. It's sort of like the uh, ripped up painting from the Curious Village. Except it's in the form of a camera now. Uh, this guy does not have a puzzle for us. So yeah, uh, once I finish recording this Let's Play, I'll have recorded all of the Let's Plays for Year 7. Then it'll just be editing from here on out. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm on spring break right now, so I'm going to try to get this Let's Play recorded uh, within my spring break. It's a week long, and this game isn't too terribly long. It's about the same length as, the, as Curious Village, so... Uh, hopefully I could just get that done rather quickly if I just maintain a good recording schedule. Try not to record it all in one sitting like I did with other games in the past. I'm just going to try and take it slow, just have good progress throughout all the days. But yeah, as we saw, there was another hidden puzzle here. Puzzle number 16, Crazy Daisies. Now for something on the flowery side. Of the three pictures labeled A, B, and C, one of them is actually the same as the picture on the far left. However, the image on the far left has had its contents flipped left and left to right and its colors inverted 
and change to black and white. Of A, B, and C, which picture is the same as the black and white picture on the far left? Hint number one, the black and white color scheme of the altered image makes this puzzle a lot more challenging, doesn't it? However, this, chan this change to the image may end up helping you more than you know. Remember, in the altered image, dark spots are now bright and vice versa. Hint number two, if you've been looking for what parts of A, B, and C don't match the black and white image, you'll eventually find an answer. But since there is only a single solution, it may be easier to start by finding how A, B, and C differ from one another. Hint number three, pay attention to the circles at the center of each flower. Also, take a good look at the number of the dots and their positions in the same image. The solution is picture A. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. That's right. Why don't I keep on saying that's right? Like, I don't know if Meowth wrote all these. Like, that's right. Nice job. Not all puzzles will be such a breeze, but let's keep moving for now. Just going to continue examining around this room if we got anything. Oh, take a look at this, Professor. It's food scraps, if I'm not mistaken. Do you suppose Tom wandered into the kitchen to grab something to eat? Well, it is possible. Though, if that's the case, the child certainly is lacking in the manners department. Uh, we picked them up. No, they just disappeared. Okay. Uh, got any other uh, hint coins? Doesn't look like it. And doesn't look like she has anything for Oh, she fell asleep. I uh, imagine she tired herself out fretting over the child's disappearance. Come, Luke, the sooner we find the lad, the sooner we can put the poor lady to ease. I don't want to put her at ease, though. She's annoying. Just got to learn to be a better gentleman. Uh, over here is... Oh! Is everything all right, miss? I'm just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Say, does that lady seem kind of familiar to you? Hmm, yes, now that you mention it. Something about her did seem rather familiar. Uh, you got anything to say about that other lady who does not look familiar? Uh, doesn't seem like I'm looking for a small child. Have you seen him? Little boy, huh? Nope, sorry, but mister, but that doesn't ring any bells. Uh, did you get lost on the train? Because unfortunately, we haven't been able to track down the missing taunt. You know, I probably shouldn't spread rumors, but hey, I've got nothing else to do. Did you know that there's a weird old lady staying in this car? What if she kidnapped the little one and has him stowed away with her room? I know it's probably not true, but what if? She's a total bizarro. I can't help but thinking that. But I could get in trouble for spreading rumors about patrons, so I forget about anything I said, okay? And again, I cannot settle on her voice either. It's just like, Luke and Layton are the only ones who are ever consistent. And strange old lady, I wonder who they could possibly be talking about. Could it be... Granny Riddleton? Hello there, sunny boys. Ever get all knock-kneed and goose-bumpy from a terrifyingly hard puzzle? Well, have no fear. The beautiful, glowing, clairvoyant Granny Riddleton stands before you are ready to help. I should have known. Who else could have this... Who, who else could this tiny house belong to? Hey, wait a second. What are you doing here anyway? So, you've heard of me, eh, Shorty? Good to know. I'm still a hit with the yawnins. Hee <laughs> hee. What do you mean? Of course I've heard of you. We met before, remember? Hmm, I suspect you've got the wrong granny boy. Never seen you before. But you're here now, so that means you want to hear my spiel, right? Um, not really. Oh, no need to be so modest. Allow me to thank you for visiting me by bestowing a little tidbit of information for you. My specialty, you see, is puzzles. That's everyone's specialty. Puzzles people forgot about. Okay, those puzzles people miss? Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? No need to turn red. It happens to the best of puzzlers. What I do, you see, is I take those poor lost little puzzles and invite them to come stay with me. I imagine any puzzles you left behind have found their way to my hut as well. If you want to say hello. If my hut is empty, then you clever lads will just have to go out there and find some more puzzles. Now, why don't you take a peek inside the hut and see what's there? And we go ahead and do that. There are no puzzles in Granny Riddleton's shack. Basically the same spiel we got in the first game, but you may be wondering why she doesn't remember us. 
Uh, again, spoilers for the first game if you haven't played it. But in that game, it was revealed that all the citizens of St. Mystere were robots and none of them were actually real. So it is possible that that Granny Riddleton was also a robot. And then this is the first time we're meeting the real one. So that could explain why we, uh, why she doesn't seem to remember us. Or it could also be a uh, Nurse Joy slash Anna from Fire Emblem situation, which she has like a bajillion sisters that all look the same. But uh, either way, it's kind of funny. Go over here now. Uh, we got oh, we got this beefcake over here, just hanging out. Hank, hey, it's baby Hank. Oh, passenger, sorry, I didn't mean to get in the way of you being on the deck. You're not a passenger too. No, I'm just a mechanic on this train. I ride along her with her in case something goes funny. But as you might figure, she's my she's smooth as butter. Makes my job pretty easy. In fact, I got so much free time that I started making up puzzles. Wanna take one for the test drive? I was actually uh my friend Chris actually gave me a puzzle when we were like starting our Vis Nomadic recording. And I was just like, oh my god, I saved this for Professor Late and I wanna get and it just sort of Get, got me excited to start recording this, so I'm really glad that I started. Puzzle number 25, Surviving in the Wild. After years of bad business, a local zoo has finally run out of money to feed its animals. Belly's rumbling from days with no food, and the animals make a plan to escape the zoo. After prying open the bars on the rusted cages, all the animals attempt to find their way through the maze-like walls of the zoo to the exit. Tap the picture of each animal you think made it out safely uh, out of the zoo, and then tap submit to answer. Just remember, an animal shows its true colors in the wild. It's a pretty good hint right there. But as for the actual hints, hint number one. To start, try tracing your way through the maze. This trick is probably old news to you by now, but in case you forgot, it's often helpful to try working your way backward from the exit. Hint number two. Do mazes make your head spin? Take some take some of these. Take some of the work out of the following all of those roads by using the memo function to mark the dead ends on the paths that lead to them. Hint number three. If you've already figured out which animals can make it to the exit, congratulations! But think of a moment but think for a moment about the title of this puzzle. All of the animals are free once they leave their cages. But it could be a jungle out there. Just because an animal can find its way to the exit doesn't mean it'll make it out alive. How gruesome. Uh, but the solution is that the only animal that makes it out of here alive is the lion. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. Because if any other animals made it out, then they would have just gotten eaten by the lion. Hey, what's the big idea? Don't you know how it's hard to pass the time with the puzzles when you solve them that fast? Eh, sorry to burst your bubble, buddy. <laughs> bubble buddy! Uh, but yeah, there's nothing else over here, it seems. So, uh, it seems like for the most part we're just going back and forth and back and forth through the train. And then stuff just gets opened up to us over time. Guess you don't really have room to complain about that. I just kind of wish it was a bit more... Uh, stuff to move around in, but I know our space is limited. We're just going back and forth on the train. I don't know, like, do people like Chapter 6 in Paper Mario Thousand Yard because it's just short and easy? Oh, wait. We decided to search for couples who saw Tom. Okay, good to know. Uh, can't talk to those guys, those couples. Uh, but yeah, do you like Chapter 6 of Thousand Yard Door because it's, like, short and easy and there aren't any enemies, or is there, like, other things too? Like, I like the characters and I like the little uh, mystery plot of it. It's all really cool and stuff. It's just, like, it's very minimalistic and short, and like it ends up being the most memorable chapter in that game. I don't know why. Uh, hey, ever so conveniently, we found a couple in here. Woo, there, young fellow. You're in the wrong room. My wife and I are staying here. Dreadfully sorry to intrude, sir, but we are searching for a lost little one. Did you happen to see or hear anything pertaining to this? Oh, sweetie, I think they might be talking about the darling cutie. Pie, who just passed by, remember? Oh, uh, yes, yes, he was a cute one. He was small and very clever looking, I'd say. So you did see Tom, then? He's a, He's been missing a while now. Uh, I don't 
I don't know whether he was a girl or a boy, truth be told. Tom's a nice name. Uh, a right nice name, though. Oh, peace paws. I bet my best mall walkers it was a girl who passed by our room. Mm, yes, now that you mention it, I had a feeling that Scamp might be a girl. But until you stick a ribbon on its head, who could really tell, eh? That sounds like a Nintendo character designer. No, I'm kidding. Now I'm all turned around. I don't have the faintest idea who we're talking about anymore. What? My thoughts exactly, Layton. I hate to say it, but it looks like this hot lead just turned cold, Professor. On the contrary, Luke. We may have just stumbled onto some extremely valuable information. What do you mean, Professor? You'll see. First, let's return to the scene of Tom's disappearance. The Professor and Luke decide to return to the site of Tom's disappearance. Uh, let's see. Why is it whenever when I actually wanted to end the, end the episode right then and there? We're only 17 minutes in. So I'm not going to do it quite yet. Oh, Inspector. Tell me, tell me, are you any closer to uncovering the whereabouts of the missing child? So you two are still flipping over the furniture to find that tyke, hmm? Hmm. Do you mean to say that the child has been found? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is that the child is no longer on this train. I've asked everyone aboard, but not one person gave me an answer. That suggested that they'd seen the lad. This led me to believe... This led me to the conclusion that the poor child either got off earlier or fell off the train. Fell off? Yes, it's entirely plausible, given the way children love to run amok. When you combine that with their oversized heads, you've got yourself a recipe for disaster. I'll contact the railway police at the next station, so feel free to give up on your search. Just a moment, Inspector. The windows on this train are, mo are mounted high, and every exit is manned. Given the situation, don't you think it's likely it's unlikely a child could have made it off the train unnoticed? Alright, I'll humor you. So tell me, Layton, where do you think this, this elusive ankle biter got off to? That I can't say, but something tells me we've made a rather large misassumption here. Oi, there's just no reasoning with you. Fine, keep playing detective. Nothing'll come of it, I tell you. Continue your search for Tom, wherever he may be. Uh, do we want to go backwards now? Da, 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 da. Hmm. What's on your mind, my boy? You look distracted. It's hard to put my finger on why, but I feel like someone has been watching us for a while. You too, then. I've been feeling that same sensation myself. Do you think that someone might be tailing us? It's certainly possible. Keep an eye out for anything unusual. Oh my god, unusual! Huh? This looks like one of Tom's shoes, doesn't it, Professor? It certainly does. But the strange thing is that it's for the same foot as the shoe we found earlier. So it is. Aha! So then, Tom must be... Oh, ho, 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 Luke, I do believe we've both made a faulty assumption. Hmm? What exactly do you mean? Recall for a moment the events as they have unfolded thus far. Uh, let's see. We found a tiny shoe on the floor. A shoe small enough for a baby. And then there was a cup we found in the kitchen. But it was lodged in a tiny lo in a tiny corner. I don't know how Tom could have wormed his way back there. Correct. In order to get back there, Tom would have to be no more than half your size. Now that you mention it, I don't think I've ever seen boys younger than myself on the train. That was my impression as well, which is why I began to consider a different line of thought. Luke, what if you and I have already seen Tom about and didn't know it? You see, all the while we've been searching for Tom, we've assumed that he's a small boy. But what if the assumption proves false? What if we've been wrong from the start? I think I see where you're getting at, Professor. The second shoe was the same in every way as the first shoe, 
including which foot it was for. If that strange pair of shoes means what I think it does, then Tom must be... Puzzle number 15, who is Tom really? Professor Layton had a feeling that Tom may not be the child we suspect him to be. Move the L-shaped pieces around and arrange them into a plus shape in the middle of the board in a way that sheds some light on Tom's true identity. Hint number one, those L-shaped pieces are pretty awkward to move around, aren't they? If only you could change the shape of the pieces into something easier to move around. Say, a square, perhaps? Hint number two, pair each L-shaped piece with a small square block and treat each pair as a single unit to be moved. Hint number three, by the way, you might be interested to know that this puzzle could be solved in as few as 20 moves. That's a really crummy hint to get for the third one, because it literally does not tell you anything. So the solution, it's sort of like a sliding puzzle. Gotta move the top left picture, top left piece to the, move the top left picture piece left. I'm getting really tired. My eyes are going, my voice is going. Uh, not a good start to this LP, but eh, we're, we're still having fun though. So uh, maybe this will just be my last recording for the night. Uh, how do I do this? Top left piece to the left. Okay. So we don't press those paw buttons. That's just like a block that's in our way. It's a sliding puzzle, basically. Hooray. Uh, oh, we could move these blocks. Good to know. Uh, we're gonna wanna do this one next. And, uh, this one over here. Sorry for the fact that commentary just goes completely down the drain whenever we get to one of these segments uh hello okay that is where i wanted to put it uh, put this up here uh next we're gonna put this one over here uh go over that drop this one down Bring this one over here. Uh, bring this one down on the corner, hide in the streets. Uh, bring this over here. The commentary is completely gone, but I didn't want to rely on improv singing this early on in the LP. Uh, we're going to move this one just right here um we're gonna put this one right here uh this one right there and after that we can get the paw prints on the corners which is nice and after that it should be plain and simple just leave it to me Layton's apprentice strikes again. Good work. Wow, that's all I had to say. Tom is a dog. Do you recall the girl we saw holding a small dog? I suspect that small dog was our friend Tom. So if we track down that girl, we'll find Tom. The professor and Luke decide to search for the young woman holding a little dog. Back and forth around the train once again. Uh, we go in here. Do you guys have a puzzle for us? Yes, you do. Good thing I checked. I'm sorry, gonna be of more help. Oh, that's the lady. Oh, it was nice talking to you folks, though. Let me give you a puzzle for the road. Puzzle number 21. Pass it on. Eight people are playing an unusual communication game. In this game, one person has to get a message across to the seven other people. It takes one minute to pass along the message, and each time the message is spoken, it can only have one recipient. Using those rules, what's the shortest amount of time and minutes for the message to pass to all seven other players? Hint number one. Each time the message is spoken, it can only have one recipient. What you need to remember here is that any one person can only spread the message to one other person at a time. Try reading the problem again, bearing in mind the above. Hint number two. Every time a given person relays the message to another person, the number of people who know the message will increase by one. Hint number three. 
One minute after the game starts, two people will know the message. If each of those people then goes on to spread the message, by the end of the second minute, a total of four people will know the message. Do you see where this is going? Uh, not in the slightest. But I do know that the solution is that it takes three minutes for the message to be passed along. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Very nice. Thanks. Holy Jesus, that's a lot of text. Yes, sirree, that's the answer. A pair of sharp tacks, the two of you are. I'm downright impressed. Still don't get their hopes up about finding that little one. He could be anywhere. Goodness, this is my husband. Sometimes he can be a little negative without realizing it. I, for one, am rooting for you. Best of luck finding that little one. And we got a camera piece from that. Very, very cool. I go just randomly, like, I don't know what that guy did to that camera to make all the pieces, like, scatter around the entire stinking world, apparently. Because we're not spending the entire game on this train, and we're going to get camera pieces in other locations. Uh, nothing from this guy. Uh, it does really believe so I believe she was headed towards the back of the train. Is that so? Well, thank you, sir. You've been most helpful. Okay, good to know. Still can't talk to those two people. This guy doesn't have anything for us. And nothing else really left to do but head back to the back of the train. And we can talk to Chummy again and be like, Hey, I found out it's a dog, you fool. Head over the, to Baybets and inform her that her child is no longer of this world. I mean above the train. Inspector, we are mere moments away from discovering Tom's location. Might I ask to give you give us just a bit longer to finish our search? Still don't want to face the truth, eh, Layton? Fine, since you just intent on it and see how Baby is napping right now, I'll wait a while longer. But mind you, the moment she wakes up, I'm taking my findings to her. Got it? Between your lack of findings, if you want to prove yourself right, bring the boy back before that. Understood. I plan to do just that, Inspector. We better find that girl with the dog as quickly as we can. Uh, this guy is blocking the way for us, apparently. Not sure what that's about. Uh, his name's Browsley. Hey, looky here! You guys have solved at least 12 puzzles! Okay, this is one of those moments where, like, if you're not a fan of the whole puzzle aspect and you just want to experience the story, uh, hate, sorry to say, but you actually do have to play the game in order to experience the game. So, if you get to a certain point in the game... Uh, sometimes there'll be little barricades that say you need to solve a certain amount of puzzles before you can progress. And in this case, you need to solve at least 12 of them before going forward. I applaud you. Heartily. I can't see how I could dislike a couple of can-do go-getters like yourselves. Let's be pals, eh? Uh, good to know. And he also has a puzzle of his own for us. Nope, that's not the answer. Whoop, got this one way heavy on my mind, I tell you. Now what's it to you? What can I do you for? We're looking for a young lady with a small dog. Have you seen anyone fitting that description? Yeah, I remember seeing someone like that pass by. I was headed to the back of the train, I think. Thank you very much. We'll just be on our way. Now hold it right there, Top Hat. I see how it is. Get old Grousley to answer your question, then scoot off without a word. I told you what you wanted to know, so the way I figure it, you should at least lend a fellow a hand. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize you needed our help. How I may be of service. There's this puzzle that's been on my mind for ages now. Maybe you'll have better luck with it. Wanna try? Puzzle number 12, Clouds and Sky. And hey, after this one, we'll have every single puzzle from 1 to 25 in our possession. That's pretty cool. A man sitting next to you on the train shows you a picture he's drawn. Let's say this picture has a total area of 10. Can you figure out how much of it is made up in clouds compared to the area that's made up of sky? Don't think you need to Don't think you need to guess the answer. There's a definite method you could use to work this out. How much of the area is sky versus clouds? Hint number 1. You never know what secrets the area around the window might hide. Try using those studs stuck around the frame of the window to simplify things. Hint number 2. Open the memo function, da 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 da, and using the studs around the window, divide the picture into 10 squares. There, now doesn't that make things easier? 
Hint number three, compare each square with the others. By now, perhaps you've managed to spot that some of the squares have the same designs as other squares, but are inverted in color scheme. Any pair of squares that you find like this have the same amount of sky and cloud, right? But you still have to deal with those other squares that are completely blue. The solution, geez, the answer has been six in a lot of these puzzles, but the sky has an area of six and the clouds have an area of four. So for this, we want to put six and then a four. A 64! This should do the trick. Huh. Wonderful. Oh, so that's how you do it. Oh, no, wrong voice. Oh, so that's how you do it. You got quite a head on your shoulders, don't ya? Now, as to that girl you were asking about, she's probably on the observation deck behind me. Well, now that's taken care of, let's head to the back of the train and have a conversation with this girl. Excuse me. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, it's you! Yes, I had the sneaking suspicion that it was you who was tailing us. Flora, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. It's just... Well, you see, I just didn't want to be all alone again. Hmm. Professor? What lies ahead could be dangerous. Huh? That's why you'll have to be extra careful. All right? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's the dog we saw earlier. Quick, grab him. Yep! Well, I'll be. Tom wasn't a boy at all. Oh, right you are, Luke. Now let's get him back to his owner. Oh, um, I suppose I'll just be going now. Don't be ridiculous. Come along now. Flora is now traveling with you. The top screen show you shows who's walking with you. That's a very roundabout way of saying, Flora, join the party! Now, I'm very glad that Flora actually is kind of a mainstay in the series now, because that's what I like about the series is that, like, um, that the, even though the games have their own individual story, there's still, like, an overarching thing going on with them. And Flora, it's just, like, a very unique case, because, like, it's not just, like, a thing that we got from the first game that gets carried over to the next one. It's a whole extra person that's from this one specific game that gets brought over into this one now and, uh, gets added into the story. It's very much like One Piece, how... We get all these unique characters from different uh, elements of the main story, and they just sort of carry over with it and move on with the adventure with us, which is really cool. And um, and it sort of is why the newer episodes of One Piece, like, it's kind of hard to look back on them and like really enjoy them or find them memorable because we don't have any characters that join us on the journey and uh, make them like give us a reminder of what we went through in that area, because. Sky Island is going always be like my least favorite arc in all One Piece because like it's the first arc we ever have, not just the first arc but like a whole saga where we don't get any new crew members, and it's just sort of forgettable because of that because we don't have any characters that remind me of that place, and then like in some of the newer stuff, um, we just don't have any uh, crew members. I know the crew's like kind of big and complete at this point, but I still would have preferred it if like I wouldn't mind certain characters that we met at this point joining the crew but they just don't do that they just sort of become like an alliance who don't really travel with you which is a way of doing it i suppose just so you don't have a huge stinking main cast that's in every episode but yeah that's just sort of how i feel about that in one piece and, and i just also want an excuse to stay out here on the train because like look at the little animation of the bushes going by it looks really cool so i just want to leave you with this nice little imagery as we ended things off flora is now going to be joining us for this adventure and i am very much happy to have her along for the ride next time on professor layton in the diabolical box we will be returning tom to his very annoying owner 
Just between you and me, I have a feeling that his running away wasn't an accident, if you catch my drift. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Thank you.